Live. Cool. Hi As guys. man, take over. <laughs> Welcome back to uh, Facebook Live. We're Naked Security. I'm Harry. This is Doug. Hello, As folks. Always. Uh, as always, please leave your questions in the comments below, and I'm sure we'll get right to Not your comments them. and the questions did I below. Say it? I, said it, did I? <laughs> no, I would say it. I would say it every time. Leave your questions in the comments below, and we'll yeah. get around to answering them. And if not, we'll get around to doing it later. So, Duck, uh, last week on Naked Security, uh, and not for the first time. Wait, we wait, wait. About hang on, hang on. I'm going to be in trouble if Go I on. don't. Say oh, you're doing it first. You're doing yeah, it first. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, okay, okay. Uh, just a reminder, because uh, some people have asked us to do this. Uh, basically. The Naked Security Podcast, we had a little break, we're back with Series 2, we're already at Episode 7, and we've had some really nice reviews, we love that, and reviews help us to spread the word of the podcast and do well, but a few people have said, hey, how come I never knew about this thing before, why don't you mention it more often? So here we are on Naked Security Live, telling you about the Naked Security Podcast. Go to Spotify, go to SoundCloud, go to Apple Podcasts, just search for Naked Security, you'll find us, or go to nakedsecurity.sophos.com, search for podcast, you'll find all the episodes. We discuss issues uh, of the day just like we do here on Facebook Live, Naked Security Live, with the difference, of course, that you're allowed to listen to a podcast while you're driving your car because there isn't a screen to distract you. So I've done there my duty go. there, Harry. I'm sorry, I forgot. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I was asked not so. just by the podcast producer, Alice, but actually by some of our listeners saying, hey, you should cool. tell more people about this. But let's get back to there WordPress. WordPress. Yes. yes. Uh, so yeah, last week on Naked Security, uh, not for the first time, we were talking about WordPress and how uh, users are needing updates basically more regularly and how a lot of people actually have WordPress accounts, which normally they don't actually realize they have them there bundled a lot with subscriptions uh, yeah. and a lot of them don't even realize that they actually need a bit of maintaining basically so uh, to kind of kick things off really uh, are people who have blogs and websites on WordPress uh, what is the risk if they don't maintain them correctly well the 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 particular article that we wrote this week about WordPress problems as you say it it's not the first time we've written about WordPress issues. Now, a lot of people may have a WordPress blog, it may be hosted, it may be looked after by somebody else, and they may have asked that hosting provider, what about updates, security updates? Because obviously, if you're running a complex website, and a blog is a complex website, you've got text, you've got HTML, you've got CSS, you've got JavaScript, you've got images all put together, version control, all of those things, and you've got a site that you're trying to entice people to um, so they can read stuff. Obviously, if there's a security glitch, on that site, your site could have poison content that will hit your visitors. Now, a lot of people know that WordPress has automatic updating and it's a great feature and if you are running a WordPress site, you have someone who's running it for you, that should be on so that when WordPress itself, the core WordPress gets updated, you get the update ASAP. Because experience suggests if there's a WordPress hole, the crooks will be on it probably in minutes or hours rather than days or weeks. However, just like on Microsoft Windows, if you've got a Windows laptop or your Mac, updates to the operating system, don't patch all the 200 other applications or on your phone, the apps, things that you may have installed. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have WordPress blogs and they want to customize them, they want to be competitive, they want to be a bit cooler than the next guy. So this guy might choose you know, one particular plugin, which is an add-on not written by WordPress that extends the functionality of WordPress and of course that thing is inside your very web server it has intimate access to the data that's being uploaded and it helps manage the whole thing and if you update WordPress but you don't update all those plugins you could mm. be in deep trouble yeah. particularly since those plugins may be written by a whole variety of people mm -hmm. some of them may be open source things that you downloaded two years ago the person who was developing them may have got tired they may have moved on to some other project they may never have had any security updates and so it turns out that with many WordPress installations, it's the cool little add-ons that let you do email, comments, images, all that kind of discussion forums, all that kind of stuff. Mm. It's those add-ons that bring the problems for okay. later. So it's not just enough if you've got a WordPress blog to update WordPress itself. You need to get a list of the plugins that you're using to enhance its capability, and you need to make sure that those are up to date because that's the low-hanging fruit where the crooks are going to try and break into your blog and use it as a vehicle for their own ends. Okay, there we go. Hello, Teresa, once again. Welcome Hi, Teresa. Back. That's cool. Teresa. That's Teresa. Teresa. Yes, Teresa that is from Teresa. Ontario, not Teresa from Dublin. <laughs> cool. Um, so the, a big question is here is who's actually really at the biggest risk? You know, is it small businesses who are trying to get you know traffic to their blog? Is there are they at risk here in this situation to, to growing, basically? 
obviously the thing with any cybersecurity story where you're running a server or a service that's aiming to provide some kind of value to your business to outsiders, it doesn't matter whether you're an individual, like a home user, a small biz, or a big business, your reputation's at stake if something goes wrong with your site. But I think it's fair to say that with WordPress installs, it really is small businesses are probably trying to make the most out of this. Yeah, you know, definitely. you want being in the blogging market and promoting your company that way. It's it, if you do it, you'll know it's a very competitive game. Mm. You know, you, you imagine, oh, I'll get millions of millions of people will click because there are loads of places on the internet. But you know, you might start with a few tens of visits a week, and then you might eventually get up to a thousand, and even eventually to ten thousand. You're doing pretty mm. well if you can do that. And if you get some malware on your site, or something wrong, or some bogus content, or something that when someone goes to download, sign up for a trial of your app, they get some bogus malware app instead, mm. it's your reputation that's going straight down the toilet. And that's the problem that if crooks break into your WordPress site, it doesn't matter how they got in, whether they got in through WordPress, through the hosting provider, or most likely through one of your plugins. If suddenly your site from goes from, from being well known as this perfectly innocent, maybe low traffic, but perfectly respectable source for content about your business mm. to being on every cybersecurity company's block list because yeah. you're hosting malware, then when people visit your site and their browser pops up one of those warnings saying, this site is notorious for suspicious activity, mm. you're gonna go away and you know what, you're never gonna come back. And that's the problem you've got if you're a small business. Trust and reputation and, and draw to your blog mm. is really, really, really hard to earn but it's really easy to lose. Yeah, and that's, the, that's why this really matters. And there's the, other, there's the other issue that if you're a small business, do you want people thinking, hey, you somehow were involved with cyber crooks? Yeah. Because they're not gonna care whether it happened by accident or by design. They're just gonna go, well, you don't seem to care about security. Yeah. You let crooks <coughs> use your website for bad. I'm gonna make the inference that there must be something wrong with your company. I was gonna say, the, the social media spread as well, it's so easy to, to gain a bad reputation from that so definitely yeah so you know imagine someone then posts on social media yeah, saying the chain effect if you're looking those. for a new sofa be wary of these guys mm. because i went to their website and i got a malware warning or i went to their website and i ended up signed up signed up for some weird mailing list mm. or i downloaded the android app and next thing i know my phone was on fire yeah you yeah. know the, <laughs> probably shouldn't joke about that for Samsung so Galaxy I Note 7 Samsung owners users, yeah. I probably don't feel too <laughs> amused by that but yeah so it is a real issue that, that you know you wouldn't you wouldn't you, if you placed an ad in a print medium and between sending the material to the newspaper or the magazine and it coming out someone went in and changed all the content and messed up your phone and put rude messages in there you would be aghast and it would really hurt your business mm. and it's much worse online because the fact that it happened is becomes a matter of public record and it gets into the search engines yeah. and of course there's the other issue that if your site becomes known as a place where malware has been hosted even if you didn't realize it even mm. if you later remove it that reputation stays with you for quite a while yeah. and that means search engines are going to generally vote you down they're going to regard you as a site that has a low reputation you're, you're probably going to find yourself going down in search rankings mm. so even people who've never heard of you before will be less likely to find you in the future so yeah. unfortunately this all you know it, it's kind of like if you don't look after your WordPress blog so that crooks can get in there, mm. you're putting anyone who visits your site at risk. But if so, you should worry about security on your WordPress blog for altruistic reasons because of everyone else. Mm. But it's the best sort of altruism. It's also self-serving because it's in your own interest to make sure that your site's in the best possible condition at all times. Definitely, yeah. So we've got a question from Teresa. Yep. Uh, so if we're using the free blogging platform, are we at risk? My understanding is that the WordPress.com, the, the stuff that's provided by the, 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 the hosted platform that's provided by Automatic, which is the name of the company that makes WordPress, will update automatically. The company name has two T's, by the way, but the, 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 that's my idea of a joke. It's not very funny. Um, so the problem is that if you've got a WordPress installation, you need, you need to make sure who's looking after it. So a lot of people actually figure, after they've been using WordPress for a bit, they figure, hey, I've got this hosting service, I've got my own web server, you can run your own WordPress. I mean, fewer and fewer people are doing it, but it can be quite cool because it 
it sort of lets you do whatever you want. Mm. You can mix and match and you can try some experiments and you can do things that might not be allowed on the regular platform. Um, but when you do that, you're then responsible for looking after it. If you've yeah. got WordPress through a hosting provider, not through WordPress.com itself, then you need to ask them, what do you do about updates? What plugins do you allow? How do you vet those plugins? How do you keep them up to date? If you're on the WordPress.com platform, then it should be the case that Automatic are looking after you. Naked Security is hosted on WordPress. Um, my own opinion is they've been very good to us and they do care about security a lot and they look after it well. So in that case, you know, if you're in Teresa's position, you're probably in a good one. But lots of people do deviate a bit because they figure they want to do, you know, they want to stand out, they want to try something a little bit different. Absolutely no harm in that, provided you realize that there are some risks and some responsibilities that you take on yourself. Mm. Um, so that was a rather long answer. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Teresa, I reckon you're okay, but you know you <laughs> yeah, might want sure. to go and check. Yeah. Particularly if you, if you, as you said, you were talking about earlier, you know, you, could, you you might decide, hey, I want to start my own podcast, or I want to start my own my own you know image gallery that, that where I'll you know I'll sell my photography online. And so I don't want a regular blog. I'm going to go with a hosting platform that's that's more about my kind of business, and they may have blogging thrown in mm. and they might offer you a whole range of different choices and one of them WordPress and for all you know that might be something that they've they're hosting themselves and it might be tuned you know not a, a regular sort of WordPress instance but something tuned for the particular Im industry sector mm. then you need to go to that provider and say right tell me what you're doing not just about your, the WordPress component about all the places where they're hosting content that essentially has your name and your reputation plastered all over it mm. how do they administer it how do they look after their servers what's their, what's their patching regimen for the operating system for the apps and for all the plugins that go with those apps yeah. so it's not just about oh well I apply the latest Linux updates or Windows updates or Mac updates there's much more to it there you have to make sure that the whole ecosystem is up to date as well mm. Cool. Okay. Well, that was pretty much more of like towards the last question is just so what can I do to stay safe? What can I do to make sure that my WordPress account is basically safe from malware? Well, I guess there's two. There's there's uh, quite literally rather than figuratively two sides to that. If you're if you're run if you're using Word, uh, the WordPress software yourself and you're using it to run a service that offers content to other people, you need to make sure that you're patching really promptly. And by that, I don't just mean that you're within a couple of months or a couple of weeks or even a couple of days. Mm. We've written on Naked Security before of not, this was not WordPress, it was another uh, content management platform where their users were told, by the way, if you didn't patch within seven hours of the last security update, we reckon the crooks got in because as soon as we announced the patch, they were, they were, they were yeah. right on it. So if you're running the WordPress, you need, to be, you need to make sure that patching, that you're either doing it automatically well, actually, I recommend that everything you can do automatically, you should, but you yeah, also definitely. need to revisit regularly to make sure that the automatic stuff worked. Yeah. If you're a visitor, regular visitor to blogs, it doesn't matter what they are, whether they're WordPress, whether they're Drupal, Joomla, Apache, Nginx, whatever the service is, you, need, you should be, I recommend that you're using some kind of uh, software that's not just a traditional antivirus that blocks bad stuff coming in that you choose to download. Also look for something like, shameless plug, Sophos Home, which is free on Windows and Mac if you like, uh, which also looks at the websites you're about to go to. Because the idea is if you know, if a website already has a bad reputation, even if it might, they might be in the process of cleaning it up, mm. it's nice to know before you go there, because that gives you a better chance of blocking any bad stuff than waiting till than inspecting everything that comes back and hoping you'll find the bad stuff. Yep. So, you know, if you're a user of, of uh, a, 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 you know, a prolific consumer of online content through a variety of media, then make sure that if you're using, if you're choosing an antivirus, what, what let's call it an antivirus program these days, make sure that it includes something that doesn't just look at what you're downloading, it also looks at where you're going and tries to stop that in advance. It has an element of web filtering. Mm -hmm. um, and of you know, bear in mind as well that even a site you've been to many times before, even some very, very mainstream large business sites, if you get a warning about those, even though you think, but this is a big and reputable company, bad things do happen and legit sites do get poisoned. So if you get a warning, don't ignore it. Yeah. I think it's the best thing to do. Right. Well, I think that's, uh, that's all it is. So thank you very much. Though. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Harry. And so, uh, listen to that podcast, folks. <laughs> <laughs> it is good, I promise. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Bye.